First team players of West Ham United that were not involved in the international break at the end of the season today return to begin their pre-season preparations ahead of that friendly on Monday night against Bowdoin Wood. On arrival at Rush Green, they were greeted with Porter Cabins, David Moyes, a vacant captain's armband, no new signings and one coach, Kevin Nolan. I'm joking, I'm joking. There's more than just Kevin Nolan. There's Kevin Nolan, there's Billy McKinley, there's Kevin Nolan and Billy McKinley. There's plenty of coaches, but the main core, David Moyes' main team, well, we're two down, aren't we? Mark Warburton left a couple of weeks ago, and today we've had official confirmation that Paul Nevin has also left David Moyes' backroom staff. So Moyes, he's after two coaches now, not just, I mean, filling one is hard enough, isn't it? But to fill two spots seems a tricky one. So it'll be interesting to see who David Moyes gets in. But before we get on with the rest of the show, can I ask for a quick favour? If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to Hammers Chat. If you have, brilliant, thank you very much, much appreciate it. But if you haven't, do us a favour, will you? There's a big red button under the screen, it says subscribe, it's completely free, it takes you two seconds, and when you do so, when you click on your subscription feed, you'll get all the new Hammers Chat videos. But don't let, don't let that last part put you off. Um, join the Hammers Chat journey, you might just enjoy it. It's free. Anyway. Yesterday, the rumours came out that Paul Nevin may be departing West Ham. He's exploring other opportunities, both domestically and abroad. That was via Express employee on the West Ham way. Earlier on this afternoon, we had official confirmation on the West Ham website that he's departed via mutual consent. He left a nice little statement thanking the players and the staff he's worked with, um, saying that he enjoyed his time. The club gave him a little thank you for his efforts. And off he goes with his Conference League winner's medal in his back pocket. Um... Jacob Steinberg has suggested that he's heading to France, actually, to join Patrick Vieira's coaching team. Now, that's not official, so we'll have to wait and see. To be honest with you, I'm not that bothered where he goes now. Uh, he's gone. He's no longer part of West Ham. Off he goes. So, well, I'll say we'll wait and see. I probably, I probably won't. It, it, I might see it crop up somewhere, but I'm not going to pay that much attention to him. But anyway, I've got a few different opinions on this one. And some of my opinions com conflict my own opinions, if that makes sense. I'm looking at sort of the good side of it and the bad side. So I'm sort of undecided whether I like this or not. And by the end of the video, hopefully I'll have reached a little bit of a conclusion saying that out loud kind of thing. But when the rumours came out yesterday, I thought, this is bad news. I thought, I don't like this. Because when Warburton left, I wasn't that bothered because... It, it never really felt right. The appointment never... At the time when we appointed Warburton, I was delighted because he played different football to David Moyes and I was hoping to see different football. I was hoping to see influences of Mark Warburton last season. Didn't really feel like that. Since we spoke to Mark Warburton last week, I think it's only just backed up my own theory a little bit, which was he didn't really get on with David Moyes, that they had different ways of wanting to play football. But regardless, when Warburton left a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't that bothered because I felt it didn't really fit how David Moyes wanted to do things. And I thought, if you're not going to listen to somebody that's got contrasting ideas to yourself, then just get rid of him and get someone in that... It's a bit of a yes, man. Just get in a coach that sings from the same hymn sheet as you. Because if you're not going to listen to somebody with a different voice and a different opinion and a different way of doing things, you're just going to discard them. There's no point to having them there. So you might as well get somebody else in that has the same beliefs as you and just be a stronger unit altogether. So Warburton leaving, I wasn't that fussed. Nevin feels different. Nevin feels significant because he's been with David Moyes from the start. So when we've finished sixth and seventh, Nevin was part of that. Warburton wasn't. Even when Pierce left, I was a little bit... Mm, because whilst we finished seventh under Stuart Pierce, we also had that five, six months of football, where it wasn't that great. Pierce was here when we were playing poorly. Now, of course, that means Nevin was here when we were playing poorly, but he was also here when the football was good. He was also here when, like I said, fin finished sixth and seventh. So for the successes at West Ham, Nevin's been constant. And when you see David Moyes during the game on a Saturday afternoon, or usually Sunday afternoon, but when you see Moyes during the game on the touchline, Nevin's the one I see the most in his ear, or should I say Moyes in his ear. He feel, It feels like he's the one David Moyes has trusted the most. I rarely see Moyes speaking to McKinley, didn't really see him speaking to Warburton occasionally. Nolan quite a lot uh, when the iPad comes out. Maybe Nolan's there because he knows how to use the iPad. I've not seen anyone else use it. Um, Nolan's the only guy I see with the iPad. Maybe he's got the, 
the pin. Facial recognition is set up for Kevin Dolan's face only. No one else can actually access the iPad. But anyway, when it comes to the communications, when it comes to sort of getting the subs warmed up and stuff, Nevin feels like the one that's involved in all of this. And like I said, he's been there from the start. I mean, if you look at that photo from St. Andrews a couple of seasons ago now, they're all gone. Uh, Pierce, Irvine... And Nevin, gone. Warburton's came in left. McKinley wasn't there now, but he's still there. Then you've got Xavier Valero, the goalkeeping coach. But I sort of discontinue him a little bit because he was there pre-David Moyes. That's not a David Moyes appointment. And the club sing his praises highly. Mark Warburton didn't really emphasise it. But when I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago, he slipped in. That that's one of the best goalkeeping coaches I've ever worked with. He's superb. That is not a David Moyes appointment. That I don't know who brought him in, actually. I'm convinced he was here when Bilic was here. Was he here under Allardyce? But I don't know. It feels like verrero has been here for quite some time now. He's part of the furniture, really. And since he's been here, our goalkeepers have usually performed pretty well. But anyway, the goalkeeping coach remains. That group of coaches at St Andrews in that photograph, they're all gone now. Um, just Kevin Nolan remains with David Moyes, Nevins now left so it felt significant and I have to say it felt a little bit when Alan Irvine left I was a bit like ooh that feels like a blow didn't really feel it was Stuart Pearce I felt the opposite with Mark Warburton I thought well this is possibly an opportunity for David Moyes to get someone in that's going to suit him initially Nevin felt like a blow as well um, and I thought this is not going to be good for David Moyes it's hard to tell we'll, we'll have to wait and see but part of the reason I've sort of thought about it and thought maybe this is a good thing because while it Nevin was here when it was good and I, I enjoyed the football. Listen, under David Moyes, I'm quite critical of the way he plays football. I don't like it, but it's not applicable to his whole time here. When we had lockdown football, when we had Jesse Lingard, I thoroughly enjoyed watching us. I thought we played some really good stuff. And in between then and now, there has been some games. There's been some games I thought we've played well. The football's been decent. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Not all the time, but there's there's been plenty of um, games along the way where I have actually enjoyed it. But by and large, the last 18 months or so, I haven't particularly enjoyed the style of play on offer from us. But Evan's been part of that. He has been. He's been part of it. And he, he's been one of the ones that has contributed to us. And last season, if you take the Conference League to one side for a minute, it, it wasn't a very enjoyable campaign. The Conference League was enjoyable. But again, we were f still favourites to win it. And even then, we played like it was a cup competition, which is what we should have done. We, we didn't back teams to a side or anything we just rocked up and got the job done it was a professional performance a lot of the time in European football and I've got no problem with that by the way this is not a criticism of that but I'm just putting the Conference League to one side it's a different environment but the Premier League football on display last season I didn't really enjoy it to be honest with you um, and, and never was a big part so something needs to change something has to change because we can't have a repeat of last season we I did the mug of tea with Gonzo last week on Patreon and we were sort of talking about next season really and it's a bit early to make predictions because we don't know there's nothing happened yet we haven't signed anybody but also at the same time we need to employ two coaches for the start but so in terms of like what do you think West Ham might achieve next season it's hard to really be confident with your prediction so at the minute I'm quite I guess open to suggestions if you like I said to Gonzo, you could convince me now that we will be in a relegation battle and we could possibly finish 18th next season. And you could convince me, you know, we've lost the captain, we've lost our best player, that, you know, will Paqueta perform the same without Declan Rice behind him? Don't know. Can we get a tune out of Skimaka? Um, you know, we've got Zuma's in, injury prone, we've got a Gerard, Ben Rama, and Kurnay, but we've got a Gerard and um, Ben Rama. Two important players last season going to African nations. At the minute, we don't really have replacements for them. So there's a lot of reasons that you could use to convince me that we're going to struggle next season. I've got no comeback to those. On the other hand, you could throw stuff at me to try and convince me that the football will be a bit better and that we're going to finish mid-table. I've got no comeback yet. There's not enough evidence. So my point is, right now, I think we could be in a relegation battle, but you know something we could be free of a relegation battle all season and finish mid-table and get to the knockouts of the, the Europa League 
I, I don't know. Everything's sort of on the table at this point, as far as I'm concerned. But it's what we do this summer that's really going to determine what we do next season, obviously. And a part of that is the coaching team. And it was replacing Mark Warburton, but now it's replacing Warburton and Paul Nevin. But one thing's for sure is we can't do what we did last season. There's, there's a talk, I say talk, Warburton himself hinted at it, that all wasn't well among the coaching team last season. There was rumours throughout the season that there was... Moyes wasn't getting on with his coaches. Some of his coaches weren't getting on with some of the players. Whether that was true or just rumours, we'll never know. But Warburton sat there and told me I had to bite my tongue every day. That's not a good thing. But I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think the fact that the coaches and whatever are arguing last season is a bad thing because... We were crap. The, the 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 season was not a good one. For the large majority, we were in a relegation battle. I'd be more concerned if I heard that the coaches were playing happy families and they weren't that bothered. That would concern me more. So the fact that there is a little bit of frustration in that team and that they are disagreeing about stuff, good. I want them to be. I don't want them all content with being 18th and, oh, wait, I don't worry about it. Something will happen and we'll get out of the relegation. No, I want them arguing with each other to try and find a solution of getting out of there but now we got we got to the end of the season we stayed up we won the conference league great we've got a, we've given ourselves a little bit of a platform to build on for next season and while we all talk about like the restructure of our midfield the rebuild of West Ham United with the deck combined money because we're gonna have to do something now with him going to Arsenal maybe a rebuild of the coaching team is exactly what we need for next season I don't know. Now, if the one thing that worries me is lack of faith in David Moyes changing, probably. You know, Warburton came in and he suggested that he that the reason he was employed was to try and change things at West Ham, but he wasn't really listened to and they didn't really change things. So, on one hand, there's an opportunity to bring in new coaches and revamp the coaching team and perhaps revamp West Ham a little bit we kept, we kept getting told that there was going to be like a, a new identity of West Ham that we were trying new ways of playing last season didn't really see it myself at all times so having these vacancies on the coaching team presents another opportunity to do that but in order to have confidence in that I need to have confidence that first of all the manager will bring in different voices which he can do Mark Warburton was one of them he did bring in a coach with a different voice that's fine but yeah, I also need to have confidence that the manager will listen to these new coaches. I don't have that. How can I? We brought in one coach with a different voice and he's left because he wasn't able to speak. It's it's hard to sit here and feel confident that David Moyes is now going to bring in two or three new coaches with a new way of playing and that they're going to go for it. But at the same time, like I said, I do feel something has to change. And like I said at the very start of the video... I appreciate my own opinions are conflicting each other here. I'm sort of undecided if I'm worried or, I wouldn't say excited, but maybe intrigued by the opportunity available to David Boyce West Ham United now to, to do something here. You know, does Tim Stiden have a, a, a little black book of um, top European coaches as well? Well, you'll have a couple from Leverkusen and he'll know some of the coaches from Leverkusen and perhaps Werder Bremen as well. Is it, his prior, is it his responsibility to bring in coaches? I don't think so. We've The one thing I will say is I think it's Moyes needs to pick his own coaches. I think that's important. I think Moyes has to pick them. Because you know we all sit here and say, hey, Moyes don't pick the players. Will he play them? Well, we've also got an evidence that Moyes I say pick, doesn't pick the coach. Warburton claims Moyes picked him. I'm not sure 100% believe that myself. But we, we had a coach last season that wasn't being listened to. He's only got four of them. Nolan, McKinley, Nevin and Warburton. The four main coaches. He only he had four. And he didn't listen to one of them that we're aware of. Don't, we don't know if he listened to the other three. But one of them's gone as well now. Um, so yeah, there you go. Paul Nevin has left West Ham United. I'm just checking my little bullet points. Make sure I, no, I, I noted them all down. But I think I did. I think I've covered them all. But that's my thoughts. It'd be interesting to see your thoughts in, in the comments as well. I'll pop back later on tonight and see what you lot are all saying in regards to Paul Nevin departing West Ham. But it's, the official announcement is on the website. You want to go have a little read. It's interesting. Um, I feel like... I could be wrong. I feel like he didn't actually thank David Moyes, but I might have that. Go check it yourself. But I've got a funny feeling Nevin didn't actually mention David Moyes and his little departing thing. Um, but... 
Anyway, he's gone. Two vacancies that we're aware of in David Moyes' coaching staff. So it's a little bit of watch this space kind of thing. But Nevin's gone. Warburton's gone. Kevin Dolan's still there though. And I'll be here tomorrow. Uh, please do drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new to Hammers Chat. Please subscribe if you're new to Hammers Chat. Do that bit. I'll catch up with you in a bit.